Let's get educated. That's why we're here, to bring you the stories impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses. It's time for a little education. Why, hello, everyone, and welcome to Educated. I am Katie Patrick, and I am joined by Mr. Ed David Efiarazzo. Yes, thank you. Do you ever extend your name out, Efiarazzo? No, only when I'm introduced running on the court. No, I don't <laughs> even remember those days. Efiarazzo! Well, anyway, uh, you should be. And from yeah. now on, that's how I will introduce you. Let's get ready to rumble. rumble. Speaking of rumble. Speaking no, of anyway. rumble, yeah, you should. Uh, well, let's talk about rumble and how we yes. are on rumble and how Worldview Matters is on rumble. Yes. What's be happening? Because Freedom Project is on rumble. They are putting every episode of Worldview Matters on rumble as well. Check out that platform. And this morning, we got a chance to talk with Pastor Carl Gallups. And uh, we talked about some biblical things, worldview issues, but the Biden crime family and other things we got to discuss. So, yeah, that's worldviewmatters.tv if you would like to subscribe for free and you'll just get one email a week, maybe every now and then, you know, I'll write a little thing. And, oh, but, uh, so yeah. I talk to his fans. I understand. Good stuff. Friends, family in Christ. There we go. Now, before we get started, again, quick little reminder that if you enjoy Rumble, then uh, there you it is. might as well go over there because we are now uploading all of our episodes of Educated and Worldview Matters to our new channel over there. So please visit rumble.com slash Freedom Project and give it a little follow. That's right. And now it's that special time of week Ooh. where we check in with our favorite one of our favorite Floridians, Mr. Alex Newman, to see what story he has to share with us this week. Hey, Alex. Thanks, guys. Great to be here. Uh, this is one of those that is hard to believe, but uh, in the modern era, maybe not so much anymore. They literally have a book in the schools in California that talks about raping babies and sex acts with dogs. Uh, yeah, can't make this stuff up. It's just absolutely vile. It's so sick, we actually cannot quote the book, it's so disgusting. But so obviously, you know, the textbook wars are heating up in California and uh, those trying to protect children from this vile filth are uh, raising fresh concerns about uh, another book that is available to children through school libraries. It's called Push. Uh, it's listed as African American Studies. And um, it's mostly about incest. Yes, you heard me. It's mostly about incest, but it includes references to raping babies sexual activities with dogs, and a whole bunch of other vile stuff that we can't even talk about. Uh, the no novel was written by an author who goes by the name of Sapphire, and it ostensibly tells the story of a 16-year-old obese and illiterate girl from the ghetto who is raped and impregnated by her father. Um, it features language really so outrageous that we cannot repeat it here. Um, it it's got endless graphic references to anal sex and bestiality and oral sex, masturbation, incest, and more. Uh, and it's written in this weird ghetto English. I don't even know how to describe it. Uh, and so this uh, situation was actually discovered by uh, Santa Ana Unified teacher Brenda Lebsack. Uh, she's a former school board member, and she has worked for years trying to expose this horror going on in her own district uh, and also in public schools across California. Uh, her district is uh, primarily Hispanic. These are uh, primarily Catholic parents who are not okay with this stuff, and yet the school district doesn't want to tell them about it. Um, she's uh, she's become very prominent. Uh, her writings have been featured at the Epic Times, at the Heritage Foundation's Daily Signal. I've interviewed her numerous times. Uh, she's really a, a wonderful fighter for children. And uh, this is what she said about this uh, filthy book. She says, is this how the black community wants their culture represented in our schools across America? Uh, she posted something like this on her uh, website, brendaforkids.com. And she says, uh, after reading this, I'm ashamed to be an alumna of Santa Ana High School. Uh, her research shows that there are at least a dozen copies of this filthy, vile, so-called book at the Santa Ana High School Library. At least one of them was checked out when she checked. And of course, uh, Lebsack blasted the idea that raping babies and having sex with dogs should be considered diverse or inclusive or representative of African-American culture or uh, in any way appropriate to teach anti-racism in public schools, which is, of course, the justification for many of these filthy books. And yet uh, California political and education leaders, uh, including, by the way, the California Teachers Association, are waging total war 
scorched earth campaign on any parents who try to protect children from this evil. So uh, Lebsack said she'd be going to consult the Orange County NAACP to see if that's how they believe African-Americans should be portrayed and represented in schools. Um, now, uh, Push, this vile book that we've been talking about, has been banned in, in numerous other jurisdictions that have some common sense for obvious reasons. But uh, in California, uh, they just passed uh, AB 1078. Uh, it is now illegal to ban books like Push, even if they are normalizing the most horrific perversion imaginable, regardless of how the community feels, regardless of how the parents feel, regardless of how the local elected school board feels, it doesn't matter. You just pay for the school. You just hand over your children. They will determine what filth needs to be inserted in the minds of your children. Uh, and if school boards try to protect children, they'll face major fines and uh, the state will end up uh, going around the school board and providing the book to the children. Anyways, uh, California Governor Gavin Newsom, a radical leftist, uh, he actually signed this bill into law. And he says, from Temecula to Tallahassee, fringe ideologues across the country are attempting to whitewash history and ban books from schools. Oh, wow. Well, that's terrible. Uh, with this new law, he says, we're cementing California's role as the true freedom state, a place where children can have vile pornography. No, that, just kidding. That's not what he said. He said, a place where families not political fanatics have the freedom to decide what's right for them. Uh, and of course, by families having the right to decide what's right for them, he means small children having the right to see the most vile pornography that you can imagine. Uh, this bill was a result of uh, efforts in Temecula, in the school district there, to uh, refuse to offer disgusting textbooks glorifying a pervert named Harvey Milk. Uh, we've talked about Harvey Milk on here. He's a prominent homosexual activist, uh, I think the first homosexual elected official. Uh, what they don't tell you in the textbook is that he raped multiple children, some of whom went on to commit suicide. He was also a good buddy of Jim Jones, the crazy cult leader who mass murdered all of those innocent women and children in Guyana. Uh, so the school board, citing the uh, praise for this pedophile in this book, decided that they didn't need this book for their elementary school students. And that's when Gavin Newsom and the legislature sprang into action to protect the freedom of your children to have taxpayer funded books glorifying pedophiles and pornography. Now, obviously, you know as well as I do that these people would be in a total meltdown if somebody was out there handing Bibles or Christian literature to children in government schools. Newsom would be exploding. Uh, but you know what? They believe this monstrous filth, raping dogs, raping babies, uh, that, that's appropriate and healthy and needed for children. Uh, folks, if you love your children, you will grab him or her and run for the exits of these government indoctrination centers like the building was on fire. Thanks, guys. Today's show is sponsored by our friends at MyPillow. Save up to 66% on pristine quality bedding, towels, slippers, signature pillows, and much more when you use the code EDUCATED. That's E-D-U-C-A-T-E-D, -E EDUCATED. Support this show and a great American company. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Dr. Duke Show. I am Dr. Duke, and I am joined by Dr. Jake Jacobs. Now, Jake, I know you are a lifelong Judeophile, that you are a, you have a degree in theology, a graduate degree in theology, that you have been uh, intellectually and personally uh, a friend of the Jewish people, and I believe I am too. I don't yeah. have a degree in theology, but uh, I teach the Bible every time I can, and the Old Testament is a, is a very, very am amazing document, set of, a do set of documents that I've taught to my cl classes whenever I get a chance to do so. So what's going on in Israel is unbelievable. And we start with a story here about the death toll. I mean, by the time you hear this show, from when we record it, uh, it the, the numbers will be higher and higher. But suffice it to say, this is indeed the worst attack on Jews since the Holocaust. Since the Holocaust in, in Duke, I can remember as a kid, uh, the Yom Kippur War, when it happened my senior year in high school, and it was considered the worst event since the Holocaust. And the, the, the radical terrorist Muslims, the jihadi, they called for the extermination of Israel in 73, 67, 56, 48, since eternity. And they picked Yom Kippur, the holiest of holy days. Now they picked October 7th, Simcha Torah, the joy of the Torah, the celebration of the reading of the five books of Moses. And what this is, is a clash of civilizations, Western Christian, Judeo-Christian civilization versus the evil 
I mean, this the Nazi-like civilization of uh, jihad, holy war, it, it, Islam. It's not Nazi-like. They are holding up signs. Mike's got images of this, of swastikas. Oh, yes. Right? And this might be a good place to go, something we would have gotten to later. There you see them. They are, they are appropriating the most vile symbol for progressives all across the world, and the progressives in this country are applauding it. And take a look at the history you brought in. Uh, this goes a long way. This is... Heimlich Himmler, an arch Nazi and a most of the brutal, one of the most brutal Nazis who ever lived, bowing, cow, ta, ta, cow, what do you call it? Cow towing. Uh, thank you. Yep. Cow towing before the Grand Mufti. Explain this. The Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, uh, Amin Al Hosseini. He actually lived in Berlin in the early 40s, met with Heinrich Himmler, the head of the SS, the number two man behind the, the Unlösung, the final solution. Uh, he met with Hitler. Hitler gave him power over a Waffen SS unit in the eastern part of Europe to be able to help complete the final solution of the Judenfrage, the Jewish question, the, the, the answer being the extermination of every single Jew, and not only in Europe if they could, but all all of the earth. And by the way, Hamas, that is the grandpapa of Hamas. Yep. And Hamas's charter, which came out in 1988, calls for the obliteration of the nation of Israel, of the Jewish people, not just in Israel, but around the world. Iran has demanded war against Israel for 30 years now, way before that, before the, when the, the first, uh, the, uh, the first, uh, hostage taking in 1979 right uh, the Khomeini right that yep. that was the first monster that had national attention because of what he had done and the thing that is so damning about this is that this would not have happened under Trump uh, this is not idle boasting I I have you on this show I have been as critical as Donald Trump yep. as anybody who's voted for him and would vote for him again in this circumstance but the problem here is is that Weakness, weakness always invites it's this. It's like blood it in not, the ocean. It's not a coincidence that this happened now, within a week or two of all that money, that capitulation by Joe Biden, sending the world stage know that we'll pay any price so that you, if, the more hostages you take, we're going to keep doing this. Uh, and then finally, the, we have a, a quote, a clip from Joe Biden. So we got some, uh, after hiding in his basement somewhere for the first couple of days, he finally did respond. Take a look at this clip. This is terrorism, but sadly for the Jewish people, it's not new. We stand with Israel. We stand with Israel. And we will make sure Israel has what it needs to take care of its citizens, defend itself, and respond to this attack. There's no justification for terrorism. There's no excuse. Hamas does not stand for the Palestinian people's right to dignity and self-determination. Its stated purpose is the annihilation of the state of Israel and the murder of Jewish people. Like every nation in the world, Israel has the right to respond, indeed has a duty to respond to these vicious attacks. We're surging additional military assistance, including ammunition and interceptors, to replenish Iron Dome. We're going to make sure that Israel does not run out of these critical assets to defend its cities and its citizens. Give the man credit, right? Let's give him credit for at least saying what he said. Having said that, who's the titular leader of the forces of the left in this country, it's Joe Biden. Who did they rally around to be the spokes dummy, or excuse me, spokes per, person for their ideology? Who has been signing off on, whether he's in his right mind or not, on the undermining of the military, the CRT, the LGBTQ stuff? Who's been doing this? Who's been capitulating to thugs like Iran, the Iranian leadership? Who's doing that? Now, if there's one person who should come out and say, on top of what he did say, all credit to him for it. And to those Democrats, those progressives, those college kids, those activists who are using this on the left as a tool to side with murder and torture and rape, you must 
change immediately. That's what we really need. Exactly. And I'm disgusted to think there was Kamala Harris in the background who endorses Black Lives Matter Marxists, which is an anti-Semitic, pro-Hamas, pro-Palestinian organization. And stop and think of this, Duke. Across the United States of America, from Berkeley to Florida to Harvard University, student organizations were crying from the river to the sea, Palestine must be free. That is a a terminology that means the eradication, the annihilation of the state of Israel. The point is, is right now Biden knows he cannot and must not let the true uh, real world of what leftism is about to be shown to the world so he's going to support Israel thank God we had two aircraft carriers going they're there right now the Eisenhower and the Ford but the fact of the matter is he's Janus faced he's two-faced and he's a part of the problem remember all that weaponry that was left in Afghanistan that a buckle in Afghanistan like blood in the ocean the shark smells the weakness of the enemy and Hamas Hezbollah and the Islamic Revolutionary Army of Iran knows exactly what's going on we have an incompetent senile commander-in-chief and that's why they attack and we talked about this and it's absolutely true this is the same joe biden that abandoned the afghanistan war i mean look if you want to get out you do it the right way you don't drag everybody out and then leave the afghanis who sided with us to their fate and you certainly don't lead leave billions and billions of dollars of dangerous weapons in country in fact this is what joe biden had to say about leaving weapons behind in 2007. If tomorrow the order goes out from the president, I'm president of the United States, I issue an order, end the war today, begin to withdraw all American troops. It will take a year to get the American troops out. Do you hear me now? That's the truth. It will take a year to get them physically out. Now, if you leave all the equipment behind, you might be able to do it in seven months. And you leave those billions of dollars of weapons behind, I promise they're going to be used against your grandchild and mine someday. First of all, that's creepy the way he leans into that woman. Having said that, uh, you know, there's so many angles to the story. The one that leaps out at me is these images. Now, we're not going to show some of the most revolting images, but images of 30, 40 massacred babies, heads cut off, charred and burned. If that is not the same symbolism from the Holocaust period. I mean, charred baby remains. And this is what the left is cheering all across the free world. Yeah. um, This goes back... This, this has demonic biblical ramifications. The area of Gaza, uh, this is the source of Hamas, this is the source of the evil. This goes back to the time period of Goliath, of King David. It was not conquered by Joshua. That was a major mistake by Joshua. Uh, the, these are the demons of the god of Dagon. Uh, this literally is a demonic attempt, quote Psalms 83.4, that the name of Israel shall exist exist no more. This is ultimately a war against the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel, manifesting itself right now through jihadi, Islamic holy warriors. These are despicable, vile human beings who literally, it is invoking the Holocaust. There's, there is a connection between what the Nazis desire to do and the terrorist Muslims have desired to do since Mohammed uh, in the Arabian Peninsula at the Battle of Trench, where they literally slaughtered Jews and took young girls as their concubines. And eventually, Mohammed, one of his wives, ended up being uh, one of these Jewish individuals. There's been a war against the people of of Israel since the very inception of Islam. Yeah, we have a uh, 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 major player in the uh, Judeo Defense League, right? somebody who is very seriously anti-defamation league. Uh, his name is Jonathan Greenblatt. Listen to what he has to say about what's been done. And, you know, parading women bleeding from the crotch because they were raped throughout Gaza while people hoot and holler and cheer. So look, You know, when we say, oh, this was an escalation, it was bound to happen, I am sorry. This was a massacre that was pre-planned. This was not destined to happen. It is not normal to shoot teenagers in the back, hundreds of them. So I just think, like, guys, 
get the story right. And all these pictures of like, you know, m- m- missiles or the rubble in Gaza. Please talk to the Israeli mothers and fathers who lost their children. Talk to the grandchildren whose grandparents were seized as hostages. And please stop calling this a retaliation. This is a defensive measure against an organization that is committed to one thing, killing Jews, not a peaceful resolution of a conflict, but murdering Jews. Now, again, we stand 100 percent behind what he says. However, organizations like his spend all their time attacking conservatives. They're leftists. They're absolute leftists. These are the same ones that are fine, ignoring anti-Semitism yep. in the left wing organizations. So never, I, I've never heard them call out Black Lives Matter. It's the same organization right. that calls conservatives and Christians fascists. You got so it. this is interesting. It is so bad that even leftists are realizing how bad the media has become. The language they use. The Nazis were notorious for using euphemistic language, which in essence was really about the, right. the final solution. And the, the modern legacy media today, it, it, it perverts language, it perverts reality. And I'm telling you, in a couple of weeks, when the IDF has to go into Gaza, and they're going to go... House to house, door to door. We know Hamas hides their weaponry and their jihad warriors in hospitals, in schools, in homes. And they have to come down. And they don't give a rat's patootie about their kids because they want to destroy and annihilate Jewish children. There is much more to talk about, but for the rest of the story, check out the full episode of The Dr. Duke Show. If you have a smartphone, tablet, Roku, or Apple TV, consider downloading the Freedom Project media app. It's 100% free and includes all of our weekly shows, plus lecture series, archive programs, and award-winning animated videos for families like the Presidential Minute, Battles of America, and Heroes of the West. Don't rely on the social media giants to keep you informed. Simply download the Freedom Project media app from your app store and allow notifications. And we'll let you know when a new video is ready. All right, Katie, let me ask you a question. Uh Have you ever been on a cruise ship? Have you taken any Mm. cruises? One. One. Me too. Just one. So a retired Australian couple... They love the high seas so much that they have spent nearly 500 days traveling the world after booking, ready, 51 back-to-back cruises. So it's Marty and Jess Anson. They claim that at the end of the day, it's cheaper to cruise around the world for two years than to pay for a retirement home. Creative, let's take a look. They're the couple who cruise more than the captains. People might think you're crazy. They may do, they may do, but it, it's not about them, it's about me, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> How about a cold beer? Jess and Marty Anson have clocked up 15 months on the high seas. Oh, that's nice cold. The couple has been cruising for decades, but jumped at the chance to hit the water again post-COVID. And eventually I said to my agent, look, I said, whatever comes, just book it. (laughs) And that's how it got to be such a long cruise. 51 back-to-back cruises. It's easy to say the great-grandparents simply love cruising, with all their meals taken care of and room cleaned daily. A cheaper alternative, they say, than being in a retirement home. It's a lifestyle. Where else can you go? You go for dinner, you go to a show, You go dancing um, through the day. You have all these activities. And I love the hula dancing and the the ballroom dancing. So this was the perfect answer, really. Go cruising, see the world and meet these people and make lifelong friends. And, you know, it's, it's a wonderful life. Now, the couple says that they've become creatures of habit on the ship. Every morning they wake up and play ping pong for an hour, because you could do that, uh, before they crack open a couple of 
beers. Is that how she have said it? Have a beer. Have a beer. Come here. Have a beer. Have a beer <laughs> while enjoying the view. Now, the Ansons say, well, they uh, still have another eight months until they disembark. The plan is to get on a bigger ship and go for another wow. year. Wow. So I wonder, it didn't mention the difference in cost of a retirement home for a year and all these cruises. It, 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 it is actually less. cheaper. Yeah, I, I, when I took a look at uh, look at this, are they you a actually number did, cruncher? I'm a number cruncher. It, as long here's the main thing is if they are healthy individuals, yeah, go for it. It it would be cheaper because. What do you mean if, if they're healthy? There's got to be a doctor on the cruise ship. Yeah, but if they're like if they don't have a lot of like oh, okay, I see what you mean. A lot of medical issues yeah. because they. What else do they need? It's kind of like, you know, if you're a college kid or of age or in your 20s, you know, that's why it's cheaper to go travel around because you can, you know, you're mobile, you can do these things and you can huh. do it for the cheap instead of trying to pay for a mortgage right out of, you know, in your early 20s. It's kind of similar to that because retirement homes, assisted li- retirement homes, even the ones that are a little bit more hands off, they're expensive way expensive and this way they yeah. it looks like she has fun at least so <laughs> did you see her the rosy cheeks hooping, in that one hooping. picture <laughs> they, they are having a good time marty and jess why not you know what would be, would be hard for those of us who are dog lovers i mean we're Animals. gonna have dogs for, you can't take your pets with you on a cruise true so mm, that would that's be a solid point or you can't take them to a retirement home so that you know so there you're gonna have stay a, home stay home <laughs> You have to decide, I guess, what you are going to yeah. do. But it sounds quite interesting. And your favorite recliner? You Ooh. have a favorite chair, Katie, at home? I, no. No? I don't. I have toddlers. I don't sit down. Okay. I'm all. I'm, she doesn't sit. I do not sit down. This is when I sit down right now. <laughs> right now is my time to sit. But it would be interesting. In, in 51, I wonder if they had a favorite one. If Out of 51 one cruises? Yeah. Like, this one seemed a little better. They could be going around talking to all the staff like, you know, last week you did a little bit better. Uh, step yeah, yeah. up your game. How are you feeling? Are you are you off this week or something? It'd be kind of fun. They could probably I, also get up there and like give the sh- opening spiel <laughs> every week of like, welcome to the ship. And they're yeah, probably yeah. like, yeah, okay, <laughs> here again. But anyway, we're going to say goodbye instead of saying hello. Yes. So uh, that's going to wrap up Educated for this entire week. Now, don't forget that you can catch Educated on the go by simply subscribing to the podcast on your favorite platform. And just because we are such happy-go-lucky people over here, hopefully you'll be happy-go-lucky and leave us a five-star review for this quality and quantity of banter. (laughs) Well, for Katie and myself, thanks for watching, listening, sharing on social media, please, and supporting the show. And until next week, stay educated, America.